It's not going to be the world we live in, at least not today. Uh, Street Fence coming out of the Lynx first, the Sombra Doomfist. We have seen this out of them. Bellow on the Doomfist is a bit of a comfort pick here as well. Zombie on the Anna says they want to counter our goats, which yeah. Xavier is playing minus Paddy Pan on the Sombra. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not really goats when you got the DPS in there. But, uh, the Sombra could really throw a spanner in the works for Lynx here. And a lot of Sombras in this scenario just go for the scouting. He's actually committing to this. This is, well, even if it's just a long kind of scout, wants to get a hack onto Rod Chunk. And I think actually they're kind of scouted that this is a team comp that they could be effective against. They're taking a slow right now, so not being too rushed, waiting to see if Lynx will misstep. And if Lynx do misstep and you do get a hack in there, that's one way you can get an advantage. But there is also the Sombra on the other end, Natsura Sama just waiting for his own opportunity. Didn't quite get anything out of Xavier on the first rotation, now on the second. Oh, Bella. Bella. Ooh, found Queen, but they actually chose to not commit. Bad 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 on the other hand. Got a little bit revealed. That actually forces Xavier down into this fight. It's not really the rotation they wanted to make, but they're kind of allowed to rotate onto the point for free. Lynx really taking their foot off the pressure. And that's an issue for Lynx right now. They have to get onto defense. One tick's already gone. Oh boy. This is already effective from Xavier. This is nearly going to be two thirds. Finally, they step on to contest, and I don't know why they waited so long. They didn't need to heal up, but now that they do commit, they immediately put, um, just turn on the gas, really, against Xavier. Losing Queen as it translocated away from Patapan, who is close to oh. an EMP, but not close enough. Trade back, though, and Xavier with the closer respawn. Queen actually going to go onto EMP? a wrecking ball. The EMP out means Panties is down. This is actually now very good for Xavier, thanks to that sound barrier as well, giving them plenty of legs in the fight. Rod Chung ends up off the edge, and Xavier are actually going to ultimately cap out after that. It was a bit of an awkward fight there for Lynx, because they started out with the player advantage with 6v5. And then they couldn't find the follow-up kill, waiting too long. Panapan finds the EMP, connects it onto Panties, who had the transcendence. If Panties was out of the EMP, maybe he saves his team, but that's just not going to be the case here. Natsura Summer has to fire back with an even better EMP, or else Xavier are going to snowball through. Ooh, that was nearly dicey, but they are able to get out of that one for the time being. Natsura Summer is still alive, just waiting. It's a big ultimate advantage for Link, so they should not be looking to lose this fight. Paddy Ben has also spotted out the translocated position. Here he goes. There's the EMP. Big connect in. They find Theta Court and they find Queen. Paddy Ben does eventually get his catch there, but kind of laid that trap out a little bit too long. Xavier have ultimately lost that push. So Link's actually now in a decent position on the defense. And only using one up there as well. So Link's very cheap fight for them. Xavier's just still working on the Graviton Surge. Paddy Ben's still just working on any damage he can find, but the responses have been decent enough from Link's CA. It's just every time Paddy Pan shows up, Damage him out, force him to translocate backwards. And for Xavier, they're going to lose a decent amount of time here. And he's just sitting by base because he knows that's the safest place for him right now. That's a big grab onto the rotating members of Xavier. They One find kill. Tay in that, despite the Bionade out of Thetacorn, that's very quick cleanup now from Bello. Well, the good news for Xavier is they do have a grab going into their own fight afterwards. But we're up, we're going to change himself onto a Diva, which is actually a nice response. If he stays with the Zarya, he gets his own Graviton Surge back a little bit quicker. But if he plays the Diva, there is now a chance that he can eat the grab from Olivier, which give, which would give Link's TH a nice buy into this defense. And that's on top of the fact that they already have a transcendent. So going for a little bit of micro change here, it might work, it might not. Now Olivier really needs to connect that grab. They do have an EMP they can lead on as well, but there is that grab out onto Bella oh, and Bumbarapa, so that's a quick catch of two Where's kills. The there. Nicely done. Panis, he was in the area, but ended up not committing that one. Now it's going to be an EMP across a good number of members. And Sudusama cannot translocate away. He's got the nano. Go down as well. Sudusama's so going to get a lot of work done here. There's that transcendence out of Panis at long last. As Bello comes back into the fight, they're trying to leverage that to give the DPS this time to do their work, but they're not going to be able to. Queen's already found Bello, and Nutsudusama, despite throwing out the EMP, there's just been no follow-up. They can't do anything. Patapan, he's already halfway back to another one of his own at this point, even closer now, and the kills still coming through constantly for Xavier. Tay, the only casualty, actually now losing Patapan, the but there's still an inspiration spot here. She's now just links here, trying to buy some time. Anytime they can get, it's and almost, down. almost a guarantee that Xavier cap out. I mean, at this point, if Xavier don't lose more members, they could actually end up getting respawns coming through. Grab second one of the fight now out for Olivier. That was what opened the fight. Could well be what closes it. Bumper up and down. Rod Tung still in the last ditch situation. That was alive, at least for now. And with that sound barrier, Before. they have got the rest of the team back into the mix. Patapan rejoining them. The snooze on the side out of Rod Tung. So rough. And Xavier, they have control. It's just a matter of time. That's another EMP coming through as well. Lynx just... They're buying a decent amount of time. I want to say Lynx here have maybe bled off a decent minute. 
That's all about they're going to get. Yep, it is indeed about all they're going to get. As 3.05 is the time on the board for Xavier. We were saying that the attack was a bit troublesome on Numbani. Well, they've managed to turn that one around just looking that bit better, that bit more disciplined, especially in the macro game, among other things. Now let's see if they can handle the defense. What a weird defense from Lynx on that B point. Like, they had the transcendence ready to go. Should have expected the Graviton Surge to come through. I mean, it's been a couple of fights. But he must have been hacked. Olivier, I... I if that wasn't the hack, it's certainly a massive misplay out of Lynx and Panties because they have the counter options available. They could either try and eat the grab, which didn't happen, or they were going to use the Transcendence to counter. And unfortunately, neither of those things transpired. The Transcendence was eventually used. The reason no one could follow up on the EMP from Nitsura Sama was because most of the Lynx were dead. They were just desperating, just in, ulting in desperation almost. There's potentially a world where maybe they can wait long enough to regroup, but they're sort of also in a position where they're just bleeding out members one by one ever so slowly or even quickly in that case. Just had to throw out what was remaining, and unfortunately for Lynx, due to the fact that they couldn't counter the Draviton Surge, that ended their defense. It's a bit tough. In a sense, Lynx did everything right in the macro game, but again, it is where the micro game failed them as it did on Numbani on their very protracted attacks that ultimately went nowhere. It's just very small differences. One player getting a pick where it's a little bit unexpected or somebody getting a little bit more value out of an ultimate when the appropriate counter was there. Like you said, this kind of happened on Numbani. You feel like Lynx were in a position to continue holding. You feel like Lynx were in a position to maybe even win, but that's just not how it transpired. Xavier managed to thread the needle with brilliant individual plays. And now in an almost mirror matchup, this is where we do see the Ana Tech versus the Zenyatta <laughs> sleeping off. That's a... Well, speaking of, it's a sleep on Bello, but you know what? Sleeping of works as well. I wanted to see where this bio nade comes through, because that's the real big difference maker for Thetacorn. Yikes, Rod Tongue had the back up for that one, just and trying Zobie. to get some more health back into him. They're having a hard time, but no, Rod Tongue will not be able to back up. This is a very difficult place now for Lynx to be in. In fact, if they don't get out with too much health remaining, they don't want to lose anyone else here, because anyone else that goes down is just staggered kills. And for Xavier, just continuing to hold this opening choke. Lynx need to find a way to break through. Lynx want to rotate, but Xavier are not allowing it. It's one of those points where the sleep dart is strangely threatening if someone gets isolated, if someone gets cut off in this rotation as well. So they need to be careful. Trying Lynx to want to fight. Bash. Rally's coming out here as well. Lynx do want to fight, but that's maybe a mistake. They already lose Rod Tongue, and they're a bit slow to commit to the fight as well. Now again, oh, need man. to be wary of a sleep landing on the retreat. They're going to get out with the other four members alive, but Xavier holding fast for now. Honestly, they had no advantages to play with there. It's a little strange that they'd want to fight. It's not like they had somebody that they were definitely going to be able to kill. It's better for them to rotate if they've opened up the choke. They want to fight on the point instead because that at least has objective pressure. Now Lynx. Shatter? Yeah, big Shatter coming through. Rod Tongue on his back. They haven't quite finished off the damage. And actually, good reaction now by Panties. He's able to steer them back into the fight now with a bit of health in the pocket. Queen ends up going down. Let's do some. Plenty of charge and a grab available. Let's double grab now. Self destructs in the mix to make it messy. It's going to be nothing either way, but Lynx are getting the better of the kills so far. Just straight out fragging. Bumbarapa remaking here. Now they dive for the point itself with a numbers advantage. Should be able to isolate Olivier off to the side here. It's already been two minutes gone for Lynx TH, and they need to be able to find this cap immediately. Xavier still have members alive, so getting the cleanup here is somewhat important. Xavier can come back in if they have enough members to contest. They kind of left Panties high and dry there. He had to sit on the point, and Xavier with the counter rotation. Queen Zen. He caught him out cold, but not so much like Queen Zen and immediately back out. And now Xavier, he probably lost this point. It's really just a matter of time. Bumbaraba nearly didn't make it back up there, but they're going to be fine. Just under a minute, or rather over a minute and a half on the clock as the cap comes through. So, Lynx, now the question is, can they still cap out B? Getting the d mech on Patapan is so important. Otherwise, that was going to be a 6v6 for Xavier coming through with the nano that they had expended as well. Lynx get to walk into B now with an Earth Shatter. If they can land a good Earth Shatter, they, this can be a cap, especially because they have sustain as well. Rally was still used. They have the extra armor and a transcendence about to come up. Now just kind of sitting pretty on the point. Nice pressure laid out. Xavier has to come down to respond, but they should be able oh. to. Shatter's decent, finds Queen, but Rod Tongue put to sleep. He can't follow up on that. Queen, though, still low, and they drop THK. Now Queen will get finished off since Rod Tongue is back in the mix. Transcendence will also keep Rod Tongue plenty healthy. 
Set up the strike from Pat Pat, just kind of out the point. Oh, nice timing on the grab, but still not enough to drop Bello or Rod Tongue. And this is Lynx with a lot of control here. Only just losing Bello now. Xavier, that's trying to stick in this fight with the sound barrier, with the amount of damage Olivier pumps out, they might be able to do it. Grab out from Nutsudu Sama. No follow up, unfortunately. And now Xavier's starting to turn it back around. Olivier is just dishing so much damage. They weather the storm. And actually, Lynx, despite how well that went, didn't even get a third. Where was the self-destruct from Bumpurapa? They even had the Graviton Surge to combo. Nutsudu Sama threw that one out there. Bumpurapa got D-Meg, decides not to use the self-destruct. They committed so much into that. Transcendence was used. Sound Barrier was used. But Lynx CH just took their foot off the pedal. I don't know why, it was so bizarre. They could have probably had at least a couple of ticks there. It's just unfortunate. And again, it's those little micro things. Now they're really relying on Rod Tongue with an Earth Shadow. Has had reasonable connection on them so far. Double rally now. Charge in for Queen. They knock that one down. He's got a nano boost on him, so they need to keep him at bay. Boot back helps Watch do that, but still an overwhelming amount of damage. And Lynx desperately trying to force a retreat back up against the wall. Survived that one. Still waiting for the Earth Shatter. It whiffs. It only got Patapan, and Bella's already been traded back against. Now the rest just crumble under the barrage from Xavier. Now this is going to be... It's going to be it for Xavier in terms of maintaining control now. They have now double tank ultimates. Lynx have been fully reset. They're back in rebuilding phase for their ults and they don't have too much time to play with. In terms of getting a good time bank, while Xavier have 305, Lynx will not be able to match that at all. Lynx just want any cap that they can get. They want to force this into an overtime scenario at the, at the least now. But for Xavier, they should be able to clean up this next fight as provided they don't uh, whip these ultimates. Go ahead, rotate around the side here. This is a bit of a tight angle in. They need to be very wary of the grab. The other side is on. It's sort of some I might get this one. Look at THK's positioning. This is really nice. Just they're ready to get a bash or a boot into displaced Lynx, but Lynx don't quite fall prey to it. Now, Lynx need to be careful here because cooldowns are now in the space where they can do it There's again. The bash onto Bellow. The Earth Shattered though a little bit wide. And that's not the ideal charge target. Still though, they find Rod Tongue, and that's plenty enough. That means that those ultimates have counted for something. And with a sleep on the Sama, that's an extra guaranteed kill in the mix. Bellow as well. Didn't actually retreat with the team, chose not to, has ended up going down for it to Xavier. Good fight, and back with the ult charge on Queen. And to be honest, Lynx TH had the opportunity there. They saw that both Tay and THK had used cooldowns to try and catch them on rotation. Once that happened, Lynx TH, if they just went straight away, they would have been able to rotate onto the point without any troubles. But because they waited so long, THK had another shield bash ready. Tay was ready to boop again. And Lynx TH just completely messing up that timing. And like you said, Xavier still have ultimates to play with. They're just very comfortably in the driver's seat right now. I don't see Lynx TH really turning this around unless Mitsuda Summer gets a great grab and Olivier completely whiffs. This man is an animal. He's booped before and he will boop Panties. again. Panties is in trouble, ends up going down. Nice catch from Dedicord to get the last ticket damage in there. And now this is a terrible spot for Lynx. The Reds, I mean, at least they're able to take a dive, right? It's something, but Tay's already charged a sound barrier. Queen's nearly back on an Earth Shatter as well. And the big problem there is they got nothing out of Xavier. It was just... You know, free win for them. They got some alt charge in there. A decent reset off the map means Link's TH don't feed a lot. This might be a uh, kill here. Bello might go for it. Uh, yeah, he does. Gets the opening damage, then takes the bash. This is an opening now for Lynx. With that numbers advantage just barely. It's still a huge ultimate disparity and respawn advantage for the side of Xavier. Sound barrier to keep them safe off the decord. Comes back into the fray. Now grab out. They need to get the follow-up damage. Oh, they do. They so find it Bello. Yeah, just too late on that sound barrier, unfortunately. And it's also still not enough to save Rod Tongue. They're just surrounded on all fronts without enough healing. The damage becomes overwhelming. They have at least given them more of a chance to rebuild other ultimates. But this is still a very hard-to-crack defense. I mean, that's been their best in terms of finding an advantage, getting an early kill. 6v5. Pressuring out ultimates from Xavier, Graviton Surge used, Sound Barrier used as well. And Link CH at least have that grab advantage, but this is final fight territory now. We're gonna get into overtime. This has to hit and they have to dodge the Earth Shadow from Queen. There's a lot of checkpoints that they have to be able to tick off on this list. This is looking like it might not be very doable. Again, rotating on the low ground. They're able to successfully do that part. They are seconds. coming up on ultimates. They need to combo a grab, self-destruct, or at least something. Look at THK, he's waiting. Huge connection. The bash, the earth shatter, and Lynx just walked right into it. The trap is sprung. Bella wasn't there for any kind of counter stun. Panties, he's alone. 
Oh, that was unfortunate. And such a, an anticlimactic way to end, because arguably that was going to be the best fight yet for Lynx in terms of the macro game for a very long time. Yep. But that is more what we were expecting out of this matchup. Now this is after, obviously, we, we would say like their best push. It's after that initial snowball, which we should have expected a lot yeah. more out of. Again, I'm still just questioning the lack of the self-destruct theater combo with the Graviton Surge. It seemed like everything was set up and they've already committed so much. They had no reason at that stage to not commit more. If they just threw everything at that point, maybe they get something out of it. Maybe they lose the point anyway, but at least they have progress, which makes their further pushes a lot better. They also decide to always rotate underneath the ramp the long way around. The fact that they don't expect THK just to be waiting around the wings for that shield dash combo straight into an earth shatter is a little mind boggling because yeah. it's happened so many times. And I was looking at the sort of silhouette there, THK is waiting on the wings and it's like, this is going to be a shield every, bash every combo. Every time as well. And it lands perfectly. Queen just, clean, Queen just slams it on everybody. Massive cleanup. Bellows on the other side of the map. And it all goes so wrong for Lynx. It's just, I mean... And by the way, actually, he said something interesting at the end there. Bellow on the other side of the map. Because actually, he was looking to be in that position in the previous rotation as well. That was how he was actually able to get that catch on Thitacorn when he did. It's because he was off to that side. And no one from Xavier really knew. They hadn't accounted for it. So actually... That Xavier committing, sorry, Link's rather committing to a five versus six, very slow rotation, kind of playing right into Xavier's hand as well. I mean, it's they're trying to set up a pincer, but it's so risky, it's almost not um, worth it. I, I think Bello, from his perspective, he's maybe looking for another kill on a support or something like that that is staggering around, or he's looking to be able to touch the point quickly because they were going to get into overtime. That's an acceptable enough of an excuse. If not, then the only other reason that he's scouting positioning such that when you do see Link CH make that long rotation around, Bello can sort of scout early and say, this player is hiding here, this player is trying to do that. But when you consider that, and then they get caught out by the shield bash combo it's, anyway, it's it not doesn't enough. make a lot of sense. So it ends up just being a really unfortunate place to be. And uh, for Lynx, I mean, after that snowball fa failed, there just wasn't a lot left in their tank. And it's... Uh, you see Xavier just raking up more and more ultimates, not having to spend many ultimates in response. It's not even like Lynx TH were bleeding resources dry from Xavier, working towards that last push. It just never happened. It's a bit of an unfortunate spot, but again, I would dare say this is more what we expected out of this matchup. And it's good to see Xavier just that, that little bit cleaner, that little bit more disciplined. And now it's Lynx's same mistakes that are starting to cost them. Uh, so this is the disparity we were kind of expecting. Lynx don't really have that same room to uh, improve right now within the scope of the series, I mean. They certainly can improve over time, and you do always want to be. You want to fix those mistakes, but Xavier, they... I mean, th these are issues they've had across a number of games already so far, this, uh, this tournament, but to varying degrees. Tonight, especially the first map, was some of the worst we've seen it, so this is just a bit more of a return yep. to situation normal, and that is, like I said, where we see and the disparity. Without wanting to be unfair to Lynx, because I think they've put up a, a very decent contest here. Um, and they're not out just yet, the by thing the way. Is, the thing is, when you look at Xavier across the board, even when they have been losing, Busan, again, probably is the outlier here. By the way, Nick's map coming up as Route 66. Xavier have been generally in a much better place and you kind of feel like especially when you look at Nimbani where they really struggled and even Hanamura where they lost a point here or there or maybe struggled to attack here or there it was mostly off the back of their own mistakes their own lack of discipline their own sort of macro misplays it wasn't so much yeah Lynx is seriously outperforming Xavier here Xavier are doing something wacky that they probably shouldn't be doing Xavier have done something very wrong and they've been punished for that correctly but it's been on Xavier's um, Xavier's missteps rather than Lynx their own initiative yeah. to say. So again, not wanting to be unfair to Lynx because where they have been winning has been well deserved, but where Xavier have been winning, they're winning hard, much harder than when Lynx are winning. And, and that's the reality, right? It, it is Xavier's series to lose here. That's the reality. If, if they lose, it's going to be more on their mistakes. It is Lynx capitalizing on them, of course, but it will be more down to Xavier's mistakes yeah. that would cause that. And now that we're seeing them make less and less mistakes, it is starting to look like we should end up in a 3-1 situation here, depending on how Route 66 plays out. And I would have liked to have seen Lynx, and potentially they still can get a second map here, but getting a second map would force us to map 5 on Nepal which is probably going to be a better game mode for Link Sing as how clean in general Busan was for them. This is assuming they can repeat that performance. And this is assuming that maybe Xavier just don't have what it takes on that game mode. So 
If Lynx can push it to map five, I think this could be a very close contest that is still very hard to call. But as it is right now, going to map number four, Route 66, Xavier looking to close this one out and Lynx on their final feet. Not going to waste any time here. Very aggressive defense. Telegraphing the May as well is a little bit spicy. The changes. Yeah. Right. Uh, Xavier. They see the May, so they think, okay, immediately we're going to choose uh, to go into the Farah here. Links are being, links are caught in a very difficult place here. Well, we've seen Talon Esports previously. They went all the way back to base of change. Links, so they want to fight. And because Xavier, or rather because Lynx actually threw out that ice ball straight away without getting any catches, Xavier were able to get out of the base for free at that point. Now that Sudusama throws that one out, they don't get too wall. much for it. I mean, that, that wall did more against Lynx yeah. than it did for them. I mean, Patapan could just go over it. Natsurusama was already dead anyway, and I mean, Lynx, they're now just forced to change. And that's the problem is, because Natsurusama died so early, he couldn't cancel the wall. So you have Paddy Punch just flying directly over it, catching all the Lynx members who couldn't get counter traits or counter damage. Now they're forced to change anyway. They have to come back on a Super McCree with the Rhine. I would even go as far as to say maybe don't even play the Rhine here, play the Winston, but they've committed to this and now they need to find some value out of the McCree. Well, and they don't. Speaking of value, five, six. Wow. Oh. Highlight reel. That is that is a lot of kills for Paddy Pan. It's a lot of justice got meted out. Yep. He's Pushing out the law there. <laughs> I was looking at that. Okay, okay, three's good. Four, five. What's going yeah, on? Yeah. Number six. I thought it was just two, and then suddenly, like, three more people just kind of walked into it. That's unbelievable. If anything, though, fast reset from Link, so. Yeah, I'll give him that. That's the silver lining you get there. Well, the silver lining for Xavier is they're already 30% up on another rocket barrage. This is absolutely disgusting, and Lynx is. They just completely hit a wall here they don't know what they're trying to do i mean they need the to find McCree, they need right? to find some value again they need to find value on the mccree they're still not actually finding that like even with this composition That's find the value least. against the sky high members finally getting the ground game under control though is a bit of a boon for them and it sort of samus does catch patapan so finally links have drawn their line of the sand dug in their heels found the picks to back it up and now it's on xavier to respond i want to say again uh, part of the reason why patapan got the six kills there was because bumble up is actually on the zari instead of the diva which works for playing the rhine but it's a little bit weird with the mccree they have just won a fight it's sort of someone did get two kills xavier is forced backwards this is a very important place for links now be in. this dead eye could be very deadly it's sort of sama oh man has to back up to the payload Get some healing. Deadeye does not find anything. Does force Xavier into slightly more defensive positions. And actually, Lynx hold the payload under cover. So this is difficult for Xavier to attack into. Especially with the pharmacy as well. You can't just directly fight for the payload. Well, you tell them that to their face. They're going to find it sort of summer anyway. That being said, the rest of Xavier caught in that grab as they were. Bumbarapa able to follow up that with the damage. This is a really late in the day grab from Olivier. They're trying to just combo that between himself and Patapan, but it's not a rocket barrage that's doing it. Now Patapan dies on the retreat. Xavier, there was no need for that. You know what, man? I don't have to tell you to your face because Bumbarapa will do all the talking for me. Four kills for him. And that's exactly Link's TH hiding in the cover. Having control of the cut, waiting for Xavier to go into there. Paddy Pan forced to change. Ooh, yikes. Takes chunks on the approach as well. Still looking for an angle in. There we go. Aggression. This is still kind of dangerous for Paddy Pan, that bash bang combo. Now only just a bang combo. It's already a combo when it's just a single item. It's going to be Nutsuru Sam, but it's kind of desperately trying to land shots down now onto the payload itself. Bit of a difficult spot for him. Goes down for it. Now Xavier back under control. This is such a hard place for McCree to be. It's like he wasn't finding enough damage. It just seems like his peacemaker just turned into a bit of a BB gun or a pea shooter at that sort of stage. Changes now back onto the main, which is a decent tag against the Ryan Goats plus Spook, plus uh, Paddy Pan on the Doomfist as well. For Xavier now, looking to complete this B push. Link's still nowhere to be seen. The only thing is, this is actually kind of something they maybe wanted the May for initially, so they're actually switching back onto it. I'm not sure how I feel about this. It could work, it might not. We will just have to see, but the grab for now is good, and they find Tay thanks to it. 
Good charge out though to counter that one against Nasurusama. Xavier catching Bumbarapa as well. Suddenly it's Link sorely on the back foot now. This pick has not paid off. Patapan is now a man unleashed. Oh, Look boy. at him go. Gets panties as well. Highlight reels on Farah. Highlight reels on Doomfist. Is there anything Patapan can't do? At this stage, I'm not too sure because Xavier, they're just continuing to roll on through. It just seems like they don't even care that there's a May on the other side. It's sort of summer gets killed almost immediately. I want to say that if there's anywhere May does get some value, it's probably on point C, but you got to be considerate of where Paddy Pan is. He's nearly on the media strike right now. In fact, does have it. There needs to be some kills coming out from Lynx. There we go, into the back side. Sudusama forced to go all icicle. Rod Sung down means Earth Shatter connects for free and smackdown on Panties. Patapan finds himself another three in the fight. They haven't done anything to stop the Doomfist. Team kill comes through. Cart still a rolling. And they don't even, I mean, they have the Transcendence. There was maybe a potential for them to counter things out. They still are going to save that for the Graviton Surge, but at that sort of stage, Xavier just have not been abided. Link's TH, Mitsudasama swapping back onto the McCree. Maybe the Bash Bang will work. Grab out means there's very little follow up on that Earth Shatter. Mitsudasama did at least find TH case. There is an opening here, and Link's do have the closer respawn. But Xavier, not to be deterred, even in losing Queen, is still trying to trade blows back on the retreat, though it is a retreat now in earnest as Thidicorn drops as well. And the card nearly reached the end there. We've got still 2 minutes 13 remaining on the clock for the defense. Lynx need to win a lot of fights in a row, four to five fights in a row to actually complete this defense now for Xavier. I mean, so far things seemingly have been working. Might dead. Waiting for these tank ultimates to charge up. Xavier, they do have the tools at their disposal. Bumbarapa just coming up on a grab now. He's gonna have to get a lot out of it. Nice Does bump land. up then Earth Shatter. The grab though in response and Patapan is actually the first casualty in that one. Now THK. So, nicely handled by Lynx. That uh, grab did connect and it was plenty enough. And now we have to sort of consider maybe Patapan has to change here. He can maybe play a Widow. Or just go on to, you know what, you'd expect the Divi here and play the Goats directly into Lynx because currently with both Brigida and McCree onto the field as a Doomfist, if you go in, things get very difficult and he is dying quite early now. Previously, when he's getting a lot of value, he's staying alive and he's getting a lot of kills. Right now, he's one of the first ones to die. Very early Earth Shadow gets nothing. Goes sky high here as Patapan slams down on top of the grab, and that's two already. This is what they were looking for. They were just kind of waiting on that combo, and better yet, they even pulled the Earth Shedder out of Rod Tongue. Now Patapan getting aggressive on the back, the back line. line. Now they're going to be able to get the respawners as well, and between this guy and Queen, there's just so much damage. That should be the push now. Link's TH is going to try everything they can. Bello versus Patipan. Oh, I've been waiting for this one. Who's going to come out the better of it? It's not going to be Bello. Gets dropped by Queen. And Xavier now still in control here. Losing Tay, but good trade back. And Transcendence from Theta Corners. Patipan continues to go ham, bam, ba dam with peanut butter and jam. Bumbarapa down. Zobi dropped. Well, actually, Bumbarapa's still alive, but not for long. And that's going to be the cart making its lazy way over the finish line. 30 seconds or so remaining, about 28 was what they finished on. Decent effort from Lynx, considering there was a point there where they had just forced a reset about two minutes. They had to defend for. They got about 1.30 off the clock. So we're in a stage where this is still a decent scenario for Lynx to play in, despite not being able to completely hold. And this is where we do get to see this combo come through. And it was the Earth Shadow being uh, enabled for Queen by popping Rod Tongue into the air. Later on, we did also see the combo, the Graviton Surge into yeah. the Media Strike as well, which gave Patapam two kills. And the interesting thing with that one is the way the timing works out, you actually need to commit the Meteor Strike um, first. You need to channel it first and then throw out the Grav. As opposed to often, you know, with the Grav self-destruct, sometimes it's a little bit more, um, it's, it's roughly the same time, but generally you'll see the Grav come out of it first. So good to see that the communication is actually there for Xavier to commit and execute on these combos. And to find the, the openings as well, because it's not like you can throw a free Grav in there if you're concerned about it being eaten or something like that. So uh, props to Olivier to be able to find an opening to land a Grav on enough people such that their Manny Pan can get the slam down. Yeah. But we do have to consider, you know, this A defense was very unfortunate for Lynx. It basically didn't exist. They had a bit of a May opening gambit, which got read super easily. And there's a world where if Xavier gets to walk out of doors, or at least a few members do, and then Lynx get to clean up, they at least get a bit of an advantage in terms of ult. But because they caught nobody, and the May was just completely seen, Xavier get to choose to play the fire, which they did. 
clean up A in no time at all. And if A was properly defended, maybe Xavier don't finish the map. Speaking of play the far, Xavier want to stick to this. They obviously feel that Lynx's Super McCree wasn't enough to contest it. They've read correctly. They've read that it's going to be Ryan Goats, and this is exactly what Farah's going to excel in. And that's the thing, even if Lynx do make the change here, Xavier are confident against the Super McCree. That's very telling. Sort of the stage now where first thing we have to consider is there a decent cart movement for, for how long? Because look at the ult charge for THK, it's certainly going up quickly. This is all that CHK wants to do. Just sit pretty, throw out the rockets, and get in behind those shields. Speaking of, Lynx barely making any headway, either in position or ultimate charge. Long rotation leaves them super exposed. Rod Sun goes down. They're just going to look to clean up the rest of these members, those that are unable to make a dive at least. You did see Bumbarafe able to get off the edge. Queen does go down in the counter trade, but Lynx, that is a big reset and a late kill on Panties. A really important for Lynx, uh, rather than Queen, Queen, to get a bunch of kills there because now he gets to sort of contest for that Urshad a little bit later on. Patty Pan's nearly catching up to THK here. Double DPS ultimates. Yikes. Xavier want to be very clean about this. They don't want to overlay both together. They want to use one and not the other. Such a great spot for Patapan as well. He gets full vision and he's almost uncontestable here. They're never going to find him by accident. You have to be careful about Panties. For an EMP. Ooh, nearly got the hack on Bombarapa that didn't and actually links go in while Patapan's in an awkward spot. But THK channeling that Rock of Mirage. Now the EMP to layer on top and this is going to be the rest of the members of Lynx either killed or routed. Choose your own adventure. Xavier charging up yet more ultimates. I like that they tested the water first. Use the Rock of Mirage. See what you can find. If it's not enough kills, clean up with the EMP. THK, because he already altered first, he gets to recharge his ultimate off the back of the EMP play. Already on to 59-60%. And the other four members all ready to go. Lights up. Still waiting for ultimates to come in on Lynx. Bella wants to challenge into the skies. THK is nearly going to have another barrage at this rate as well. Oh, man. He's down. The corn finds Bellow. That's just... That's rough. He went. He kind of went out by himself. Didn't have the support structure behind him. Wasn't being healed. Took too much damage. Instantly taken down. That's more time off the clock. That's more staggers that you have to wait for. Earth Shatter connects. And Boombarapa was turning tail as well. So he's already lost the mech. Good trade back on Patapan, though. Just alleviate some of that pressure. That's a miss, Shatter. Yeah, this is a bit of an awkward spot. Tay has gone ahead and committed a Valkyrie. Bellow, ooh, reload there. THK, <laughs> He actually turned around, still got enough damage onto the tank. Oh, nice, Tay. He's able to finish them off. And Tay going for Battle Mercy to finish off Panties. Rezzes his far uh, as well. Man, Xavier just looked good. And it's like, Blinks, if they had got that one kill secured, maybe the res doesn't come through. That's something they can play with in this following fight, but now they just don't even get that opportunity. And so is going to go on to the McCree. Maybe try and challenge both THK and Patty Pan. At least he gets double value out of this pick, but there's not a lot of time left. One minute remaining. And I mean, Xavier already won out against this competition. Oh, that, that is a huge Earth Shadow on the ground game. Nice con just to keep Queen at bay for a hot second, but it's not enough to save Bombarapa. So, numbers advantage is still there for Xavier coming up on an EMP. I just don't see that Bellow can really do enough pressure here. I mean, he can land a lot of damage, I guess, onto the other tanks. It's a bit of an awkward res. When you consider Bumbarapa was going to respawn soon, and now the Rez is MP. down for a good long while. Here comes the EMP. Oh, good aerial. Bellow finds THK. They're going to have to commit this EMP soon as they raise THK. There it goes, straight onto them. Commits back onto Panties. Finds some Queen and Olivier do the rest of the work. And all of full, all of, you know what? You can do this one. They all go down. Nice, thank merrily, you. Merrily, merrily after. Even 30 could just <laughs> find the bone and just, yeah, just lobs that in there. there. Oh, geez, that is so rough. Just tossing it at him like Halloween lolly scramble candy. It is high noon, but it's also overtime. THK does go down, but I believe Tay's got a res anyway. Nice rocket barrage from Bellow, but far too little, far too late. And Xavier, the full cap, then the full hold. Just looking better from game to game to game. That is what we needed to see out of them. Yeah, and then it's got to end. Unfortunately, Lynx THs run in the season as well. They're going to now be on... A 0-4 match score, just like Giant Esports in Group B as well. So, unfortunately for these two teams, haven't picked up a win so far this season. We'll have one more opportunity next week, but as expected, the teams uh, that we do think we're going to win, which are going to be Talon Esports and Xavier, are now both sitting at a clean 4-0. Xavier slightly less clean because they don't have the 4-0s, at least in, yeah. match, in map scores between the matches. Talon Esports still maintaining first place because of that.
And that does leave us with just the one match left for tonight. I mean, this has been an interesting one so far. Talon, we would have felt on paper coming into this of these two teams now still tied for first place. They had technically the, the harder game just because they were playing someone with a better win record, someone higher up in the tables, and someone who has also in the games looked a little bit better. And yet their win was more dominant even than Xavier's just now. That's really telling. I think things are boding pretty well for Talon moving forward into their final matchup. To the point where, unless Xavier really turned things around, I wouldn't even be surprised if Talon 4 0 Xavier next week. That doesn't mean, uh, that, that, that says less about Xavier, I think, than it does about Talon, because actually, to me, that says the returning champion is here to win again. It certainly be a challenge issued out nonetheless for both teams, I'd like to think there. Uh, you'd expect it to be a lot of action regardless. Both teams technically undefeated here, but 4 0 at peace. Xavier have a worse map score. Talon and Esports have had a general generally a better run but look that ends very quickly as well once you actually get there you can have a very good map score but if you lose the match it doesn't matter you finish second instead of first but that does conclude the second match of day eight here we have one more to go for week number four and i think this is probably going to match going to be the match of the evening yeah. there's nova versus grand Zer. very high stakes here a lot to be played for so make sure you don't go anywhere we're going to be right back after this break